bee's body is composed of three parts, an abdomen, a thorax with six legs, and a head with two antennae. Every bee has two pairs of wings and branching hairs on some part of their bodies. Stingers are only found on female bees, which are modified ovipositors, organs originally used to lay eggs. Many bee species are black and yellow in color, but many are not. They might be green, blue, red, or any number of other colors. Some even have a metallic gloss and are striped. The smallest of them, the Perdita minima bee, which is less than 2 mm long, is larger than huge carpenter bees and bumblebees. There are more than 20,000 species of bees in the world, including the honey bee, which was domesticated and introduced all over the world from its native Eurasia. Except for Antarctica, every continent has a variety of wild bees. There are almost 4,000 native bee species in North America, and they live in a variety of environments, including grasslands, deserts, and woods. Solely on Sioux, bees eat. Bees carry out the crucial task of pollination while they forage. Some pollen adheres to a bee's body as it enters a flower to consume nectar and collect pollen. The bee then moves on, dropping part of that pollen on the following flower it visits. This causes fertilization, allowing the plant to grow and produce the fruits and seeds that are a source of food for so many other wildlife species. Actually, bees are responsible for pollinating an astounding 80% of all blooming plants, including around 75% of the fruits, nuts, and vegetables farmed in the United States. All female bees have the ability to sting, but they only do so when they feel threatened. Honey bees are typically more aggressive and likely to sting when disturbed than solitary native bees since they have hives full of honey and larvae that need to be protected. Unlike the carnivorous wasps from whom they descended, blooming plants provide gary nectar and pollen that is high in protein. Bees are born as eggs, develop into larvae, eat, pupate, and then finally emerge in their adult form, where they visit flowers to feed on the nectar and pollen that are present in them. Most bees are solitary nesters, unlike the high-forming domesticated honey bee or the wild bumble bee species. They do not establish hives, produce honey, or lead communal lives. As opposed to this, they lay their eggs in a network of tiny chambers in underground tunnels, hollow plant stems, or rotting wood. Female solitary bees provide their eggs with a ball of nectar and pollen and then abandon them to mature and pupate on their own without parental care, in contrast to high-forming bee species, which care for their offspring collectively. Some species, however, do not at all construct nests. The nests made by other species will be used by these cuckoo bees to lay their eggs. Sometimes cuckoo bees will eat the host species larvae to make sure their own eggs have enough nourishment to develop into adults. Bumblebee workers can live for a month and queens for a year. Solitary bees have a similar lifespan of roughly a year, spending the majority of it growing in their nesting chamber where they hatch, pupate, and frequently overwinter. Their active adult lives, which run between three and eight weeks, are rather brief. Due to the necessity to create a nest and lay eggs, females typically live a little longer. Many natural bee species, as well as farmed honey bees, are on the decline. Some species, like the formerly ubiquitous rusty-patched bumblebee, are actually now classified as endangered in the United States. Habitat loss, disease, lawn and garden practices, pesticide use, habitat fragmentation, changes in land use, invasive species, and climate change are a few potential reasons of these decreases. Native plants, other animals, and people all depend on pollinators, particularly native bees, to survive. The National Wildlife Federation supports and maintains a number of programs that benefit pollinators. Garden for Wildlife has more information about what we do. When they gather pollen, some species of bee use a process known as buzz pollination or sonication. The bee rapidly vibrates its flight muscles while still clinging to the bloom during sonication. The pollen becomes more pliable as a result, making collection simpler. Some amazing facts. Working pollinator bees. 
nearly 90% of wild plants and 75% of the most important crops on the planet require animal pollination. Every third bite of our food is reliant on pollinators like bees. Pollination-dependent crops are worth five times as much as non-pollinated ones. I'm home, honey. While most solitary bees build their nests in the earth, social bees like honeybees and bumblebees frequently dwell in hives that are either above or below the ground. Bees can be found in a surprising number of places. These include sea walls, quarries, gravel pits, marshes, shingle, sand dunes, soft cliffs, heathlands, wetlands, chalk grasslands, and even post-industrial terrain. Bees use a transportation system to get around as well. Imagine attempting to navigate Britain without our extensive road and rail system. Or consider what life would be like if 9 out of 10 miles of road simply didn't exist. Bee lines are a creative and lovely solution to the issue of declining flower and pollinator populations. The bee lines are a network of insect trails that cross our towns and countryside. They create a network, akin to a train, that will weave over the British countryside by connecting already existing wildlife reserves. Restoring a bee to life. It may just be resting if you find a bumblebee that appears to be struggling, especially if it is a queen bee in the early spring. The best thing to do is gently place the bee onto a flower that is friendly to bees if you believe it is struggling. If there aren't any flowers that are good for bees around, make a 50 50 mixture of white sugar and water to give the bumblebee a temporary energy boost and the carbs it needs to fly. Offer a drop or two of sugar water up to the bee's front end on a teaspoon or an upside down drink cap in a protected area and give it time to heal. Using brown sugar is not advised since it is more difficult for bees to digest and giving honey to bumblebees is not recommended because it may carry diseases. Anyone can help a bee out, including you. Whether it's in our gardens, on our balconies, or on our windowsills, we can all do our part to support the bees. You can also tell your loved ones how awesome bees are and encourage them to create bee-friendly wild spaces. In order to provide bees with access to nectar from March to October, plant a variety of blooms in your garden. Traditional cottage garden blooms and local wildflowers like primrose, budlia, and marigolds are beloved by bees. Actually, bees have four wings. When flying, each side's two wings hook together to form a single, larger pair, and when not flying, they separate. Bull Gs The waggle dance is a dance action used by honeybees. It's more of a sophisticated strategy for them to communicate with one another and direct their nestmates toward the finest food source than it is a dance move at all. Decoding the waggle dance took the researchers at Sussex University two years. The Smart Group The poppy seed-sized brain of the buff-tailed bumblebee. Which is amazing considering that researchers have trained them to score a goal and be football in exchange for a sweet treat. Really unbelievable. Their feet smell surprisingly bad. Bumblebees may use their smelly footsteps to discriminate between their own fragrance, the scent of a relative, and the scent of a stranger, according to research from the University of Bristol. As a result, they can increase their chances of locating food and steer clear of previously visited blooms. A queen's only meal. In a honeybee hive, the workers can produce a new queen bee if the existing one dies. They accomplish this by choosing a young larva and feeding it a specific substance known as royal jelly, which will help the larva grow into a fruitful queen. In their hives, bees construct hexagons, and the six-sided shapes fit together perfectly. You know, some forms wouldn't function quite as well if you gave it some thought. The honeycomb would have holes if there were circles. Triangles and squares wouldn't have any gaps, but the hexagon fills the space much better. The hexagon supports the maximum weight with the least amount of material. These hexagons can be used as storage by bees. The eggs, pollen, and honey of the queen bee. This is all for today. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon for more videos. Stay tuned with AWZ.